and welcome to episode 54 of the Maine Yarn Podcast, brought to you by Knitwit Yarn Shop in Portland, Maine. I'm Julie Nye. And I'm Jen. Black Hi. Hi. <laughs> I don't know why I have a last name today. That's cool. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, we're excited to talk to you today. We have the following things we want to talk about. We've got some finished objects. We're also going to talk about what we're working on. And what we want to work on next, of course. Yeah. And then we've got to have some shop talk. Yeah. And we'll close out with some stuff we made in the making stuff section. Nice. Can't wait. Segment. <laughs> It'll be a section or a segment. You decide. Right. Listen. And oh, the we... special yeah. point today um, is that we are recording this on Zoom because mm -hmm. our schedules are a mess. And, but that means we are also going to attempt to upload this as a video. So um, I can't do that through Apple podcasts or anything like that um, because that costs a lot of money for this um, kind of low budget podcast. So apologize <laughs> for that, but I will put it on YouTube. And um, yeah, so the same place, you just go to uh, knitwitportland.com and podcasts, and I will put the link to the YouTube video out there. Um, yeah, so and you should be able to see us and what we're talking about. Um, yeah, as opposed to just our great descriptive words that are hard for me. Yeah, I mean, it's funny, in theory, when we record in person in the same location, we could also video that but we don't. Right. Yeah, that's harder. Yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> Probably because GarageBand doesn't record video. Yeah, I don't yeah. think. Yeah. I don't know. One of these days, we're going to get an audio engineer, like some of those podcasts I hear have. And, you know, yeah. maybe they would know the answers to these questions. <laughs> but until then, it yes. does. Yay. <laughs> Especially you. Just so your friends you. knitting with you. Yeah. Who particularly good at electronic stuff. <laughs> anyway, but, we have some finished what, objects. Yeah, what we do enjoy. The segue yeah. there is is yeah. really missing. So you have two things, so you should start. Okay. So the first one, and, and we're even here, but I can't show you because I left it in the shop because it was a shop sample. Mm -hmm. So I think I might've talked about this last time. Um, I used uh, Barocco's new Remix Chunky, which mm -hmm. is the same as their Remix and their Remix Light only Chunky, hence the mm -hmm. name. Um, yeah. And I made a Simply Stripes baby blanket uh, which was a, a popular one in the store we have made of Barocco Vintage Chunky, but we decided to try it in Remix Chunky. What's that? This is Remix Chunky. Oh, um, it is? Oh, yeah. and the little ball. The little uh -huh. yarn tasting. From the yarn tasting. It is. I might have one yeah. of those around here somewhere. Yeah, so it came out like super squishy. Yes. I made it with different stripes of colors. And the first two I picked were like a maroon and a yellow. And it really reminded me of uh, Hogwarts. Um, <laughs> so if you want to make like a Hogwarts scarf, I would highly recommend Remix Chunky in those two colors. Uh, but then I moved on to other colors and it looks really pretty. I just yes. and, and there's no wool in it. So it makes like a great um, summertime blanket too. Like when you're just sitting and you want something to cover your legs at night or when the air conditioner is a little too high. Um, <laughs> so which I hear is a problem in some parts of the world. Not Maine, apparently. Yeah, I don't understand. We, none of us really have air conditioners. <laughs> no, although I do want to get a quote for central air, but yeah, I don't okay. think that's going to happen. Yeah. Right. Anyway, so I finished that blanket and it went really quick because it was chunky and yeah. it was only knitting. There was no increases, no decreases, no yeah. burling. Garter stitch. Garter stitch the whole way. Yeah. So nice. beautiful. It went so fast. Like everywhere I was, I was just sitting there and my hands were knitting. Yeah. You know, I didn't nice. need to think. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So what did you finish? I finished these socks. Um, I'm not gonna show my feet in them right now, but <laughs> um I finished Very these lovely pretty. socks. Thank you. In just to prove it on the video version of this, I'm gonna hold up two of them. Ooh. Um and the hold funny it slower so we can see those colors. They kind of blur when you zip it past. Yeah, so let's see. Very pretty. It's blues uh, with purples and browns and whites and yeah, all the way to the toe. Yes, very pretty. And lovely goosey fiber dye. Um, I have the yarn band for the wheel 
but I have a feeling it's actually a different color. So I have to look that up. <laughs> and not agree. Um, but they're on Ravelry uh, as Goosey Socks again. Um, and these are the socks. It's kind of cheating to say I finished them because I think I'd finished one and started the other one. And then we did the sock class through Knitwits yeah. via Zoom uh -huh. in February. Something like that. And I put them aside and I found them again. I was like, oh, may as well finish this other sock. <laughs> so That's not cheating. I've got two bags of socks sitting here I haven't touched in ages <laughs> because I haven't wanted to wear socks in the last few months for some reason. So they haven't yeah. been motivating me. I can see that. I like wearing my shorty socks, though. Yeah. All right. So what else have you made? Because like I said, spoiler alert, you had two things finished. Mm. Only I do. And this one went super fast. I could have done it in a night, but, you know, I don't have that much time. Um, mm. So these are the, what are they called? The flirty foliage monsteras. Oh, so this yeah. is a crocheted project. And I made mm -hmm. them into earrings because, mm -hmm. you know, that's what she had done on the cover of the pattern. And I thought it was cute. Yeah. <laughs> so this pattern um it's basically like use any size yarn you would like mm -hmm. and use an appropriate size crochet hook and knit it and so you can have anything from like a, one smaller than this because this is fingering weight if you do it in lace weight it'll be even smaller yeah. up to like a chunky version which is like you know decorative things for around your house nice. so i did make two of them just you know yeah. like we're showing that we made two of things yes. and because <laughs> i've got the headset on i'm not wearing them right now um so but yeah this was crocheted out of um madeline tosh unicorn tails in the jade color um, yeah um, and i probably could make like six sets of them yeah with one tiny unicorn tail it took like almost no yarn at all they're tiny um yeah. but it was a little bit i like unicorns, though. i ripped one out when it was halfway done crochet is not really my thing like i kind of know how to do it but i'm not yeah. awesome at it so it is yeah i'm happy with the way they came out they weren't yeah, as perfect as the ones on the cover they look great my crochet skills are not up to that i feel exactly the same way you do um but my crochet skills are further behind definitely there. <laughs> we should do a crochet class again yeah crochet finishers yeah we should all right so what are you working on what am i working what am i not working on so the um the first thing I have on here, and this is so absurd because we can actually show things. So let me just read right? my bag. Um, I didn't bring everything with me down here, but I love, love, love this. So this is the project. I might've mentioned it last time. I can't remember if I'd started it then. This is the um, sea glass tea. Yeah. This is the project where non knitters are most likely to come up to me and compliment me on what I'm working on. Really? Because yeah i can tell i can tell that they're not knitters because they, they usually don't say oh what's that you're knitting they're like yeah. what's that you're saying um but <laughs> but just the colors yeah are just very interesting as you go along so I'm very happy with this and how, this how did you get it to make all those cool colors um well there are different ideas given in the videos for the pattern which I have to admit, I only watched about half of because there's a lot of videos. Which is good for someone who's yes. learning, right? Yes. And we're all different, right? Like some people really like long, written out, wordy patterns, and some people like a chart, and some yep. people like bullet points. So it's helpful for everybody. But I watched a couple, but one of the things I did was I did like the way it looked if you had one solid color and then only the other color contrasted and changed as you knitted along. But let me go back. But this is made up of scraps, right? All your fingering weight scraps. Fingering weight scraps, which, you know, as a sock knitter, I tend to have a lot of. But I had these two skeins of sock yarn and jagger spun, and I've wound them. They're similar colors, but not exactly the same. One is more pinkish, orangish. And the other one's purple. If you can see it there, I'm kind of holding it yeah, apart. Yeah. And then the other one's more purple and blue. And I just divided them up into about four or five mini balls. Yep. And then I wound one humongous ball of yarn so that I can just pull from this one. And then I'm just going like to flip this. back and forth. Yeah. yeah. And then I'm going to skeins of kestrel here with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This one's huge though. This is like, what is that? Bigger than a baseball, right? I don't know. It's a softball. It's a softball. Maybe um, <laughs> and then I happen to be using just a plain cream, but a lot of this has been very variegated yarn. So it's variegated on variegated, cool. which can get a little confusing. 
Um, but all good. Nice. <laughs> so I'm really enjoying it. Sweet. How about you? So I, I gave you the preview of my Kestrel. This is yeah. Kestrel in Lotus, and this is mm -hmm. Quince's Aaron Waite linen yarn, mm -hmm. which is a lot of fun to work with if you follow my video. So on uh, it was a tip we learned from Susie, uh, who was the prior owner of the shop. Um, and so if you go to knitwitportland.com and go to tutorials, there's one about working with Kestrel. Yeah, and I watched this, that video. You may I did watch it. it. Yeah, it wasn't very long. I watched it. I, I think I sped it up at some point to like show me winding balls. Anyway, I don't know if you can see it, but it's yeah, um, it's like a chain. So it's chain construction, and there are only like seventy-nine yards or something in a skein because it's Aaron weight, and they're fairly small. I think they're fifty-gram skeins, so it's it's a heavyish yarn, but it is linen. So basically, what you do is there's a way that you can weave them one ball into the next ball so you just make mm -hmm. one continuous ball so this is like four or five of them right here yeah. um i don't know why on the video it looks smaller than it is here make it look really big Ooh. yeah uh, anyway with that kestrel in lotus i am making a tank top called holderness and right yeah. now it's just a big piece of fabric um it is kind of cool though because it's got this kind of fold over edge so i yeah. cast on and i knit for four inches and then I did a purl row mm -hmm. and then I flipped it and kept going and then you kind of when you get four inches up you can pick up so you yeah. have so your hem is attached nice so it's a nice thick hem yeah. um I guess holds it down a little bit mm -hmm. but just going up and up and up but Holderness a Clinton company pattern by Cassie La Colette and it will be this adorable tank top Nice. So this is one of those times when working on the shop, I have to come up with like interesting patterns to share with people in the yes. newsletter. And sometimes I, I only pick things that I love and I would knit myself. Yeah. But sometimes it's like a little too much and I just have to cast it on right away myself. <laughs> so I don't know, I fall to my own uh, influencing and enabling. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. it's this adorable tank. It's uh, like it self hems and you self enabled. Yes, it's got this cool I cord like top edge and I cord um, uh, shoulder straps. Adorable, and it's going fast because it's air and weight, and I'm yeah. on size size eight needles, which are a little on the big side for me, except for that yeah. remix chunky blanket I did, which was even bigger. Yeah, that was on tens. <laughs> so nice. You mean you have a hard time with the bigger needles, or I'm just not used to them. I'm always knitting yeah. stuff on smaller needles. And I don't yeah. have it on our outline, I'll add it, but uh, I figured because we were doing this on video, I would show uh, my other project that I had been working on, which mm -hmm. I don't know that I worked on much this month, but go ahead and, and what is your, what else have you um, been working on? Well, I also just picked up my Pyricide, which is my self-made fade. Yeah. You see, it's kind of a blotchy fade, but I still like it. I like it too. And this is a <laughs> cardigan? Yes, it's the Pure Side Cardigan from Hannah Fettig's Texture book. Yep. Um, and it's actually, how did, how did Shelly Brander say it? It was like, um, it's, it's like one, one round of cabling and then seven rounds of Netflix. Yeah, something like that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm on the seven awesome. rounds of Netflix right now. <laughs> good, that's a good way to record your podcast because yeah. you shouldn't be cabling and recording. Yeah, in fact, I hadn't planned on working on it while we were podcasting, but then as I picked it up to show you, I'm like, oh, yeah, that probably would be smarter than something I have to pay attention to. <laughs> yes, definitely. All right, what else have you been working on? All right, so this one I've been talking about for a few weeks and uh, a few months, weeks, whatever. And it's <laughs> whatever. a really long pattern, but I, what's it called? Oh, The Open Mind. This was a mystery knit along by Laura Nelkin. Yep. And really cool construction, lots of cool yarns. So let me show you some of the yarns I'm using first and then see if I can. I am, I am paying so, attention. I just need to let a puppy in. Okay, I will keep talking to yes. our listeners. Hello, Please it looks like I'm talking to nobody. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sorry. I'll be right That's back. Okay. So this is Monastel Yorge Bino, and this is a mini skein set. And like Julie had done, um, it is a bunch of 
little mini skeins wound onto one another. So all into one ball. So I've got the green and then like I've got the maroon colors coming up next. Mm -hmm. um, but it made it easier to work with by winding them all into one big ball first. That yeah. might be a theme. <laughs> um, then I've got the Manos del Uruguay Marina, I think. Manos del Uruguay. Okay. <laughs> They're lace weight yarn. Sorry. Okay. And I just feel like I need to be that person who's like, para servicios en español, o prima el dos, you know. You should come with us to uh, Disney. To Disney. <laughs> yeah. I need someone to tell me to stand clear of the doors in Spanish. <laughs> Spanish. <laughs> That's, my husband has a t-shirt. It says, please stand clear of the doors in Spanish. <laughs> because as you go around on the monorail, this is totally an aside. But yeah, yeah, they always say it in English and in Spanish, which is pretty cool. Anyway, right. here it is, Marina. <laughs> I don't know if that's what I said, but that's what it is. The lace yeah. weight yarn. Yeah. And then yeah. Fino is the mini skeins. Nice. And then my other one was Adeline Tosh. It was the TML plus tweed. Yeah. Um, in the glazed pecan colorway and I have none of it here because it's oh I've got it never mind um, and then I have beads Ooh, beads oh. so yes this is a mix of beads with a bunch of fur and stuff stuck to the stickers but so all these colors are going to go amazing together and it was a mystery so I didn't know what was happening um, and the way she designed it is that it is hey, there's a little bag of stuff that I forgot I had Look at these new stitch markers. I'm just all aside for today, but look how cute that is. Oh, it's it like, is. Um, like porcelain, like almost like yeah. Polish pottery. Uh, yeah, and indigo. What's that? And it looks indigo. Is it indigo or purple? No, it is indigo, the color. Yeah. Um, anyway, I'm using those. These are in the shop too. We just got them. And then they yeah. sold out, so we just got some more. They sold really fast because yeah. Nicole, one of our lovely sales associates, loved them. And everyone who came in, she was like, oh, look at these. And they all <laughs> needed them. So it was kind of funny. Yeah. Um, and they come in this fun little bag because we can resist oh, the so bag. Cute. So cute. Um, I don't know what you've been talking about. Oh, this thing. I need some of those too. So <laughs> this massive project. Um, and I can share this now because it's beyond the mystery time. I missed kind of the deadline, but, mm -hmm. and it's not done yet. It is, so it starts off with these wings of um, the Madeline Tosh uh, TML plus tweed, and then a lace section in the middle where it's kind of alternating between the Madeline Tosh and the yeah. thinner lace weight. So it kind of gave it this interesting texture in the center. Yeah. And then we go out here and we do this mitered square thing with yeah. the, Madeline Tosh and the mini Finos all the way out. And then at mm -hmm. the end of each of those, then we start doing this lace section, which is where I am now. And this is where we start adding beads. So I'm lace weight right. um, with, and it's going to look better when it's, you know, blocked because that's what lace mm -hmm. does. But it's, um, what she call it? Um, it's lace on both sides. So it's not like a, you don't have a pearl back row. There's lace on every side. Um, and there's beads, which are a little hard to see because they match the yarn so perfectly. But it will be totally sparkly and beautiful. Yeah, um, one of our new friends at the uh, at the retreat was making that too. Yes, and she finished it. Oh. So I was motivated to get back at it, but then the holderness called to my name. And, you know, yeah. I'll get more wearing out of a holderness tank yeah. top than I will out of a lace shawl because I don't wear lace shawls a whole lot. I just love knitting them. Yeah. So I'm trying to decide if I want to bring this on the airplane with me or if it's going to be too fiddly during that lace phase. The bead project, I have brought yeah. the bead project on a plane. Yeah. And it's possible, I but mean, you might lose some of the beads. I'm just saying. Yeah. I don't know. It's more the I have to stare at it while I'm on the yeah, plane that's versus hard. something like this. If I'm still on the round and round part, I can yeah. just keep going round and round um, because I don't have to look at it and mm -hmm. I won't get car sick. Yes. Which sometimes happens on airplanes. But I don't yeah. know. It's been like a year and a half. 
or more since I've been in an airplane. Yeah, who knows? Who even knows anymore? I, know. I have a big trip coming up too, where it's going to be lots and lots of sitting in a passenger seat, hopefully. So hoping to get some good knitting done. Nice. So we'll have out and abouts like to talk about again. Yeah, we, we will actually have gone somewhere. Well, we did last time we were away when we yes. recorded. Yeah. Uh, we'll actually have left the state. Crazy. That's scary. The only it state is. I've, I've not been anywhere further than New Hampshire in <laughs> a year and a half. How scary is that? Maine yeah. to New Hampshire. I like went over the border and as we drove over the border, I felt like I was just, you know, being bad. Oh, actually, I like though. We should have out and about because I went to New York last weekend, last weekend. But was um, it knitting involved no. at all? Well, I knitted while I was there. That's good. I mean, okay. like every day. <laughs> okay. I don't know if that really counts. You didn't no. go explore any New York shows or anything. No, I would have liked to, but the peop um <laughs> my other friend Jen, not really a big knitter, so <laughs> would have been tough to yeah. You don't understand. I know. Anyway. <laughs> you have not one more thing you're working on, right? I think I do. I don't know. Did you I say that? Down three things. Yeah, I should probably figure out what that is. Um, <laughs> a knitwit hat, it says. Yes, I'm working on a hat for knitwit. And I have to be honest, I'm not very far along, but I have started it. So, yes. well, swatch, because you're designing it. Yes. Oh, I should have talked about that too. The stuff I'm designing, you're designing too from the retreat. Yeah. We can talk well, about that when you're done. I have something that I'm designing for the retreat. We're going to talk about what we want to work on next. And I've got some something oh. like that in there, but I don't want to give it away because it's kind okay. of cool or it won't be cool but we'll see i might give okay. some of the secret away but anyway this is all i have oh what a cute little cast on hat but isn't it but isn't so it tell us the premise of the hat though oh what um, a nice ring you're wearing yeah thank you um all right so starting with a hat this a is and let me get my gauge swatch out because that might be more helpful um so we have some quince lark in a beautiful purpley periwinkly, I forget the color of the name. Because I couldn't find the band. What happened to it? I don't understand. I'll look while you're talking. I'm sure I can figure it out. And Baroque, Barocco, also no band. That one's totally my fault. This beautiful Barocco. Which <laughs> Barocco is something. No hair and wait it's not ariel or dolce right no no it's not one of the new ones anyway it's uh, a mix of mohair and i want to say merino no we, we'll get you the details no no prizes um but if you look at it it's two strands every it's basically it's, two strands all together. it's lupine i believe lupin in lark and let me get you your Barocco. Lark is in the color Lupin. Mm -hmm. So Quince Lark yarn in the color Lupin. And Correct. then Barocco, which is Merino and something. I'm sorry, Mohair and something. And if you look very closely. Tiramisu. Tiramisu, thank you. you can and see Tiramisu is uh, wool, acrylic, mohair, and silk. Yeah. So we've got, I think, Mohair and then the other components are the, and the color strand. is called fig fig but it's this beautiful purpley pinky even turquoise tones yeah they go together so well so we're trying to figure out the best way to make a hat with those tones and it will be a hat pattern available only at knitwit um and you can see like i'm currently that. yeah it's I'm subtle. currently yeah it's subtle i'm playing with knitting it together is this middle stripe yeah or alternating which is this stripe but it kind of indents when you alternate so i kind of like the knitted together but it's more subtle but anyway i don't know i kind of like it separate it kind of gives it some texture yeah this one let your head breathe a little bit yeah <laughs> <laughs> so that's what i'm working on that's my third thing sorry i forgot about that <laughs> All right, sweet. Very quietly. Oh, and this ring, we might have talked about it before, but would you like to talk about the ring? Because I'm probably going to get the brand. 
Wrong. Uh, it is an Knitter's Pride uh, Mindful from the Knitter's Pride Mindful Collection. Uh, mm -hmm. It is a rope counter ring. So you wear it and it's gorgeous. It's like a tealish, sparkly, iridescent teal almost. Or jade almost. Like it's it's got some dark greens yeah. in it. I don't think it's as jade as it looks on your screen though. I'm just jaded. <laughs> okay. Oh, um, uh, yes. Yeah. Anyway, it is a, a lovely jade slash teal with an iridescent shimmer to it. And it lets you count your rows. They spin, the rings spin, and you can count up to 99. Yeah. So. Yes. Yeah, the, only, the only point I would say is that when picking your ring, if you have any form of arthritis, <laughs> never mind that as you start to knit, your fingers will get bigger and you might have a hard time taking the, the ring off, which might not be a problem. Just, just wanted to mention. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. I think it's time for a word from our sponsor. Yes. So a word from our sponsor. Knitwit Yarn Shop in Portland, Maine has been a favorite knitting destination for locals and visitors since 2004. And you can find us online too, not just here, but online. <laughs> www.knitwitportland.com is where you can shop the store virtually and explore some fun project ideas. Just click on shop to get to the online store. Also, you can follow them on Instagram at Knitwit Yarn Shop or on Facebook at Maine Knitwit. And Maine, of course, is spelled with an E. Yes. And while you're there, sign up for the newsletter so you can get all of my enabling newsletters be enabled <laughs> alongside me. We should call the newsletter the enabler. <laughs> or at least the podcast. Yes. We need a name for today's podcast. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So what do you want to work on next? Or what don't you want to work on next if that's the shorter list? I know, what don't I? Um, <laughs> I put down sock design. So we took some great classes. I need to add one to this, actually. I will add it secretly while you're talking. Nobody will ever know. <laughs> um, so I've got a sock design that came out of a class that we did with Bristol Ivy, which is thinking outside the box, maybe? Yeah. Knitting, Knitting outside, outside the box. The box. Uh, and it is a truly funky idea for a sock design. Cool. <laughs> so that's, and that's what you do. Yeah. yeah, that's what that's me saying it who doesn't knit socks the same way anybody else does right now um, <laughs> but i'm kind of excited to start it and in fact that's why i have my yarn tasting bag here because i was going to use one of them to start it but i've decided i'm i'm i want to use a different yarn to start so that's why i flipped what i was working on but i was almost going to say it's not what i want to work on next i actually am working on it next that would have been interesting but that's the first one how about you just adding things as we talk that's no fair <laughs> that's the same thing all right i've still got the tkga level two on here it's hanging around me my big binder all ready to go i just i don't know i need to do it i want to do it but for some reason at the time it's time to do it i never want to do it it's just yeah i don't know it feels more like work right now than it does something fun so yeah. it's back to the back burner i think even though i was all motivated after their conference <laughs> we'll see yeah uh how about you yeah i boring <laughs> no <laughs> well maybe it's going to help you think some stuff through about whether you really want to do it or not i, really I know it's hard um i've got my botanique on here which i do want to start i just haven't started it yet yeah um although and speaking of yeah uh, Castle Pinka Designs. I just added Bird Watcher to my list, which is her t-shirt, which is adorable. And that's what I want to make out of, uh, <laughs> we're just going to keep adding to the list. <laughs> this segment's going to go forever. We're adding as we're talking. No, I um, have more things. <laughs> oh yeah. And I didn't even talk about the, the cowl design I'm working on. Um, yeah. Anyway, the Bird Watcher. It? Do you want to add uh, it? I, no, I'm not going to add it because I already started it and we're past that segment. <laughs> Um, so the Bird Watcher is a t-shirt by mm -hmm. Casa Pinka, and I'm going to make it out of our retreat colorway color, nice. which sold out like yeah. 
hotcakes like yeah, as soon as we got back good. they're all gone oh so i grabbed a couple extra and i'm gonna mm-hmm. make a t-shirt out of it nice yes fingering weight short sleeve sweater yeah. basically all right what else you got i also have I'm still playing in my mind. This is the kind of thing that plays in my mind if I'm riding my bike. Not that I do that as much as I used to, but last weekend. Um, Or I'm riding and driving in the car, riding in the car, and my mind's just wondering. Mm -hmm. Probably shouldn't be if I'm driving, but I'm just telling you honestly what happens. Yeah. My mind wanders to this shawl and how I'm going to design it. Um, And this came out of a class also at Searsport Shores at our, at the Nitwit retreat that Jen and Chuck put on. Um, And again, I'm probably not going to say where it comes from, but it was a very meaningful class. So it stuck in my mind and I still keep thinking I've got to get away. I've got to find a way to make it work. So yeah, want to work on that next. I can see that. Yeah. (laughs) So I see a trend here in all of my non TKGA projects. They're all t-shirts. So the next one is the sea glass Mm -hmm. tea which yeah. Julie has been working on with all my scraps. I've got them all separated and ready to go. I just, and I even started swatching, but nice. I haven't gotten back to it because I'm trying to finish some other stuff. Yeah, I had to go down at least one needle size. Yeah. For what it's worth, but I often do, so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, someday. Yeah. The next one I have is Actually, can I talk about it right now? Because I'm, I'm going to forget. Um, yeah. So I got super organized. This isn't going to work, but I'm going to show the picture on my phone. I got super organized recently. I got a new piece of furniture. So I already had a chair that was going to be my knitting chair inspired by knit stars, you know, organized. Yeah. Organized. So I have a chair that is my knitting chair. My husband thinks it's his chair, but <laughs> um so i have the chair and then i needed something behind it to store the the yarn basically right um so i have a five drawer small chest which is perfect for holding projects so five projects go in that chest um so then i got myself a wipey board i'm sure there's a better word name than wipey board but come on that's what it is yeah whiteboard Mm. um and i wrote down the five drawers what's in the five drawers downstairs and then i wrote down what was in my purse and you can see it said purple socks which i finished so that needs to be replaced with knitwit hat and then i need to move the knitwit hat one which is on the drawers somewhere else and then camper because that's my secondary stash is that things tend to live in the camper too summer so that way, I've actually got a record of what I've got and what I think I'm working on. And you'll notice the next thing on the list is news sweater. So that's in the drawers, even though I haven't started it yet. It but has the yarn of, that goes with it? Yeah, all the yarn and the, I wouldn't say pattern, but the instructions we received in class. Yes. <laughs> and my needles. Nice. So it's also a place where my whole sweater's worth of yarn can sit if I put it in one of the larger drawers because the cabinet is is really cool. It's like triangular shaped. Um, So the larger drawers hold a whole sweater's worth of yarn. So drawer number five, for example, has got the pure side sweater or drawer number four, I forget, four and five are where the sweater yarns are. And then when I I want to take it with me, like obviously I have pure side with me, right? It's not in the drawers, but the rest of the yarn is. So that goes, when it comes out and about with me in my bag, my twig nice. and horn bag, Yes. then I know where to put it when it goes back. Awesome. So that's my little nerdy organization <laughs> like sidebar it. that I wanted to have today. Well, I could use something like that because I designed a cowl with our mm-hmm. dragger spun loose some balls, mouse some mm-hmm. balls. Oh, mouse right. and we haven't decided how to say it yet. Um, <laughs> And I can't find it. Like I'm done knitting it. I need to write up the pattern. And I don't know where the shot of the cowl is. Oh no, oh no. <laughs> it's gotta be in the bottom of one of my bags, but I have yeah. so many of them. Yeah. So that's my current dilemma, why I haven't written it up yet. Did you bring your um, bag that looks like a sheep with you to the retreat? No. 
Okay. Because I was going to say, if that's we the both... one that has all of my yarn ready for the um, sea glass tea in it. Okay. I was going to say, if, if it did, I'll check there in mine because maybe you put it in mine by mistake, oh. thinking it was yours. <laughs> nope. I did not bring okay. that because that's okay. sea glass. Sea glass in waiting. Yeah. Nice. All right. I'm sure it will turn up soon. So, a couple of weeks ago, uh, Madeline Tosh brought their van of one of a kinds out to our shop. Yeah. It was amazing. Covered our giant back table with all these one of a kind Madeline Tosh yarns. So, um, what is, what, can you explain one of a kind? The, like, there literally is one skein? Or some of them. Just... Some of them, there were more. Um, mm -hmm. But a lot of them, like, it wasn't like a, they were trying something or you know, they're a bunch of creative dyer types. They want to do fun things. So yeah, uh, either that or it's like the ones that they don't make anymore. Um, mm -hmm. Some were normal named ones and weren't one of a kind, but there was a lot of one of a kinds there. Yeah. And I, I bought a few things for myself. Um, one of them was a pile of, and I didn't bring it up here to put it up but it's their new wool and cotton yarn. Um, yeah. I think it's a 50-50 blend wool and cotton. And it was just lovely. It just like uh, kept calling to me. So I bought five skeins in sort of a purple to cream to teal sort of a color palette. And they're like muted colors. It's not like the bright colors, um, yeah. but kind of in a, a, what you can do a fade out of. Yep. And then I got the V back T DK pattern, mm -hmm. um, which is basically another t-shirt, but this one, it, it's got like, it's it meant to be striped in sort of a fade and yeah. the back of it, it's like a, like a V neck, but it's in the back of V back. Yep. So nice. it looks really pretty. And that is also on my list of ones I want to start very soon. Yeah. Here, I'm going right. to be like, that's a big James thing Ryan. having, is it a V neck on the front too? No. It's oh, more like a I've boat seen, neck in the front. I've seen a lot of um, shirts that are v-neck in the front and v-neck in the back recently. Yes. I suppose you could do that. There's no mm -hmm. rule that says right. you can't. But, right. And you could just turn it around then, right? It needs to be a reversible one. <laughs> Depends on how deep your V goes. Yes. Definitely. Um, but yeah. I had a sweater in the 80s that was actually a v-front sweater, and I wore it as a v-back sweater. I... It was like I, a fuzzy pink mohair sweater. I designed a sweater that I never made in art class in the 80s. No. To, a design to be knit, you know, just kind of drawing it in art class. Yeah. And how it would look. And I can still remember it. And now I want to make it. <laughs> Go for it. But it had a deep V back as well. Yeah. That's what made me think of that. Nice. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to be knitting t shirts all through winter, I think. But well, and on, on the of t-shirts do you want to talk about the one you're wearing no not yet because that there's, later? there's another segment where i'm going to talk about that i forgot sorry it's okay oh yeah, yeah make... <laughs> was there anything else in what we want to make because this could go on forever yeah i think we've added enough <laughs> okay we'll stop there <laughs> so what's going on in the shop these days so we are continuing our de-stitch nation yeah um destinations with destination destination <laughs> with... destination in espanol <laughs> <laughs> sorry oh goodness wow. um <laughs> wonderland yarn is doing this monthly mostly mm -hmm. monthly um sometimes we get a little behind or ahead or something but um so last month Last month, it's Crimea, and so and basically what they do is they take a travel postcard, like a mm -hmm. stylized travel postcard from different regions. We started mm -hmm. in New England, and we went to where we go, London, and Australia, mm -hmm. and all these places. So Crimea was the prior last one, mm -hmm. and it what it, oh it's this gorgeous uh, it's silk wall, N O I L yeah yeah Oil? voile voile. Uh, en français. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm going to switch to another language okay. right now. I just revert to Minnesota uh, if I have to have an accent. Yeah, betcha. <laughs> um, 
and it is, I don't know, it was gorgeous. And it's like a hat band and then a scarf that you can make Ooh. out of one skein of it. Um, mm -hmm. And I just, I couldn't stop staring at this yarn. I just had to buy yeah. it. It's just gorgeous. Oh. So pretty. And we've got a, a fair number of those left, uh, mm -hmm. but we just got in the shop today, uh, the newest color, and it's from Scotland. Nice. Um, and it, the pattern that comes with it is for a pair of leg warmers. <laughs> it's so great. And the colors are gorgeous. Yeah. Um, it's like I saw it. I didn't see it live, but yeah. Purples. And yeah. Really pretty. My cool. colors. Yeah. Um, anyway, super excited about that. It's up in the shop now if you want to grab it before the newsletter goes out, because usually when mm -hmm. the newsletter goes out, everyone grabs it. So yeah. Picture. Yeah. Especially that one. Yeah. And what, what type of yarn is it again? Is it fingering? I think so. I don't yeah, I think, it's, I think it's fingering. Uh, it would make sense. Because it's basically socks without feet. Yes. But it was it's a nicer one. I think it has some cashmere in it. Ooh. Yeah. Very nice. Let's see which one is it. It's the... right on there what the base was all right it's in the shop i don't have it here mm -hmm. sorry yeah, I, we'll have to I wait. think it was i think it was fingering because i think yeah. you were talking about it the but other it day. was it was a little bit more expensive than the other ones but i think it's because mm -hmm. it had the the cashmere in it so it's super yeah. soft in addition to being super beautiful yeah so yeah nice Need more yarn as we are enabling people <laughs> all right so now we're up to making stuff oh we're going to talk about making stuff that's a real surprise <laughs> <laughs> since i ruined it earlier that's okay so, so we, that's talked, a, we yeah. talked about what we told everyone what the segments would be i know like i don't know why um but that's a lovely t-shirt you're wearing jen thank you so we had a uh a third treat and we probably talked about this last time but jackie yeah. otino taught us indigo dyeing so we made an indigo vat and yeah. we dyed a number of things mm -hmm. um before we get to the t-shirt mm -hmm. i have this lovely silk scarf yeah that i dyed and i just love these colors um yeah. it's like water it kind of looks like the top of water or a tree trunk almost but if the tree was blue and white and not or or um wood grain yeah yeah except That's what blue. I mean by the tree yeah tree. but you know blue <laughs> and white and not yeah so uh, so pretty uh, yeah, you have one too that you. So we did I'm indigo I'm shibori dyeing. So the shibori yes. was like the resists. Yeah. But yeah. So I made. Just, here's <laughs> looks like uh, white squares. Yeah. So I made of toast. Yes, little pieces of toast. So I made one similar to yours. I think it actually came out a bit lighter, and then I made one with the clip method. Yeah. Uh, Different ways that. of the, resisting the yeah. dye. But I've, we put it in given, the I've given that to someone, um, so I can't show you that one either. Um, but then this one, this is actually my favorite, so I'm keeping it for myself, which yeah, is the way less one. Yeah, and how did I make this? Um, she had, um, Jackie had marbles and elastic bands, and literally something like this is where the marble was. Why are they then square not, then and not round? I don't know, physics? <laughs> Let's blame it on physics. It's got to be his fault. Um, so something like that. But yeah, you put the marble through and then the elastic. So I guess how you wrap the elastic bands makes yeah. a difference. And then you'll notice that some of them resisted really well and other ones not as much. Which is really cool. Yeah. But I really liked it. And it was modeled on um, the scarf she was wearing, which was made in a different way. But I was like, oh my God, I want to make the scarf you're yeah. wearing right now. And she said, well, you could try marbles. And yeah, I really yeah. like how it came out. Right. I'm very happy with this one. So yeah, I loved this one. This was made by like wrapping it around a giant PVC type pipe. Yes. Like <laughs> so, it was so weird. You wrapped it around the giant PVC pipe and then you tied the string around it and then you smushed it all down to the bottom of the PVC pipe. So it just, it just had this smush of fabric down there. I'm like, well, that doesn't look like anything. It comes yeah. out so great. I know it's, it's, 
it's really kind of absurd what it looks like while you're buying it and then what it looks like after you're done yeah it's very and the different indigo pot was so cool too because you pull mm -hmm. you pull stuff out and it's green right mm -hmm. and then once it interacts with the air it turns indigo so it's yeah. just such a cool process it is it is but, and i have so some my i have some i know me too yeah so, so the other thing i died was uh, this big piece of white fabric. I ran to town mm -hmm. when I found out we were doing this and bought a big piece of white fabric. And I dyed it um, just basically tie-dye method. I took like giant like holes of it without anything in it, right? So I pulled mm -hmm. up a big punch and then I put like rubber bands. I didn't think I used rubber bands. I used string because I didn't have that many rubber bands. Just mm -hmm. tied this little like cone of fabric and I did it in a bunch of different places all over. Mm -hmm. And it came out beautiful. And mm -hmm. then I brought it home and I cut it out and made a t shirt this week. So you should show us the t shirt. Yeah. I'll try to show. So this is, this is the t shirt. It mm -hmm. is from 100 Action Sewing uh, from nice. their new book. It's not, it's, it's pretty much shirt number one from 100 Acts of Sewing. Yeah. But it's from the book. So it's not exactly called that. It's just called Top. <laughs> so uh but i love right. like the way it came out um because of the way the strings wrapped like the mm -hmm. strings would resist and there'd be pieces where uh it would dye it and then there'd be pieces like strings that i just was ironing it before and i hate ironing but i'm ironing it I'm like, <laughs> oh this is so pretty just, yeah just the circles i just love them with these yeah staring it, is, at them. it is funny how much the string showed up yeah you know, expecting that I know. So, and in, in different ways, in different places. So I was yeah. super excited about it. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. We'll have to do that again sometime. I know. We'll make another day to go pot. Dump a bunch yep. of stuff in it. Yep. I bought a, I bought a kit. Yep. <laughs> I bought one years ago. I just haven't used it yet. Yeah. So yeah. We can have two different indigo occasions. Yeah. But we'll need to find more people. Cause I feel like I don't want to make a big indigo vat and then like dump it out, you know? You do have some people who live with you who might be interested. They might have some white clothes they want to dye. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of people who live near me in yeah. my house. <laughs> but yes, we should. And so, yeah, even, like, they, if you want to join us. No. <laughs> so Jackie's daughter was there, too. And mm -hmm. uh, I guess somebody had given her, I think it was someone else at the retreat. Maybe it was one of the teachers. Or I think it was Alicia's. Alicia's daughter. Yeah. Had, like, this old dress that she didn't really wear anymore. Mm -hmm. um and and then um jackie's daughter dyed it for her and it just like gave it a whole new life so yeah you just really go through it. like their old clothes and just it makes me want stuff, to go so. buy a bunch of white plain white t-shirts yeah just so that we can do this yeah but make them plain white t-shirts you would wear right yes not like just men's hands <laughs> or you could just buy plain white fabric and make them yes could but there's more steps to that but yeah, and it fits yes. you better. Just so I don't have to figure out the neckline. It's a little wide for me. No, I like it though. It's okay, but it keeps like falling down one way or the other. Yeah. But the fabric is sort of thick. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to try the pattern again at the same size, but with a thinner fabric, a little yeah. flowier. I really like the way the silk picks up, picks it up. Yeah. And how dark it is. Yeah. Yep. So maybe silk. Yeah, we'll see. It's a little see-through though. Yeah. We'll <laughs> All right. I think we might have come to the end of another main yarn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think yeah. we did. You think yeah, so? I think we did. I think All we right. did. Um, so we come to, yeah, we come to the end of a perfectly good main yarn. Yeah. Didn't even <laughs> have to play yarn checker this time. No, we really didn't. So uh, you can catch us what we were just talking about you can see us say it if you're listening to this if you want to see what we look like on youtube i don't know so if you want to yeah. that's your own risk but and if you're watching us on youtube then thank you for yeah. staying to this point because that means i didn't scare you away <laughs> <laughs> but in general yes we've had a lot of fun talking about yarn and yarn related stuff um looking forward to the next time yeah you can find the show notes at knitwitportland.com and click on the main yarn podcast. Yeah, That's where you can also find the link to the YouTube video. If you want to see yeah. what we look like. And thank you, Knitwit, for sponsoring us. Yeah, you're welcome. 
<laughs> All right. Until next time. Happy knitting. Happy knitting, everyone. <laughs>